Um, Good. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today in uh, our sofa, Pink Sofa Conversations. It's our third chapter, and I'm delighted to have you as part of this series. Thank you. Nice to be here. Good to see you. Yeah. So, Sarah and I, we met in Torino in Italy a couple of years ago. I don't know how many years. When was it, Sara? It probably can be eight years. I Almost think. eight years, yeah. And we were both yeah. doing Erasmus in the in the academy, in the university, in the final university in Torino. And then we connect immediately. But Sara is originally from Finland. And since then, we've been traveling a bit. We've been together in Colombo for uh, the Biennale. We've also did some little trips while we were in Italy. And we've been to Jordan, which was halfway art, halfway pleasure. So uh, it's always great to see you and of course I visited you, you visited me. So aside from being an artist that I admire, you're my friend, which is uh, very important. <laughs> Thanks, Sara. So for those that don't know what you do, uh, you've put some paintings behind you. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of your main discipline and what you do in painting as a, as a painter mainly in your paintings? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, for sure. Actually, these were the paintings when you were visiting me in Finland yeah. last winter. And that winter was really different from this. It was full of snow and I, we were walking to my studio space in yeah. maybe one or two meters of snow. snow. So these were actually there and now they are in my in my home where I'm now working more. Also because of the situation. Yeah. Perfect. And these paintings, they are... Um, they are water, there is a lot of water elements, so it's only water and then sometimes people are uh, human and water and in this specific case it's men and water. Okay. So it's a feeling of uh, how a man confronts the sea, either clumsy or then, or then with this powerful romantic feeling of like the, feeling the body and feeling the, the power of the ocean. I, I do... Like, oh, yeah. yeah, no, go, go, sorry, go for it, sorry. Uh, you know, if you, there is some... There is a, a guy who is making a soup, sub stand up and paddle, paddle boarding and, and he might fall. It's, it's not going to be like a very steady ride. I find from that series that I've seen live, what is quite interesting is a combination of almost pure abstractiveness. So there are some paintings or some parts of the painting that are just shapes and forms and you know, you talk about nature a lot in your art, that's true. And then suddenly there's some kind of element that your eyes does recognize, like a man paddling or something from the sea that you do, that you do um, recognize. And it does also connect me with the series when I met you in Torino that you had some wow. landscapes and parks where it really took you to abstraction or almost like an expressionism but then there are some really defined and precise elements. Do you see there is maybe an influence of movies, filming and photography in your painting? Uh, they go together, I think, in my because I work a lot with video, so I think the both are influencing each other. So I do a lot of video editing for my video artwork. So and many times I have been using the topic as as people and the, the nature people in the ocean. And when I see those images while I'm editing, they stay in my my subconscious or somewhere. So they come up also in the studio. So yeah, and then. When I'm filming, I'm thinking of all the landscape I'm being painting yeah. with watercolors. So, so, so like, there is a paint. communication. So you're basically a multidisciplinary artist. You do not only do painting, but you also do video and uh, video performance and kind of like maybe video installation. The one that you showed in Colombo was very interesting because you go out there, you take your camera and you film. So, do you have projects in which both disciplines come together and like basically share a space, are in the same space, or do you see it as a divided way of expressing a topic? 
But now I'm trying to build my video language so that it's more like a painting. And actually the recent film I did, it's more as a watercolor that is floating, but it's, it's, it's female dancers who are dancing with some nature footage I've been filming around the world. Also Jordania. So, so they're coming, but and sometimes I'm, for example, painting a painting and then I have a video on top of it. But it, at the moment, I, I'm not going to combine it in that way, but more, you know, yeah. more look for new language. Yeah, so you're basically using your paintings to construct a space within the white cube gallery space and i also know that aside from nature and human man femininity and, and we can talk into that because you're a mother so i am sure that has also affected your art you're also speaking or, or very interested on the topic of space uh, how is that is it, yeah mm -hmm. exactly tell us a little bit about your projects around space you mean space, like uh, how to relate on the space? Yeah, what, what like I'm thinking of the of the video that you did for Colombo for for Sri Lanka, where you are yeah. having a very big topic, but you know, taking it into nature and then talking about the the idea of space and and and, and the, the place basically. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, in that film, and also before. I was also reading the Thousand Plateau of Dolores Battery a long time ago and sometimes some ideas from that uh, philosophy comes in that kind of way. But in that, um, in the Columb piece, it was um, uh, very, it was the moment when there was a lot of immigration in, in Europe, 2015, it was shown 2016. And we were filming with Linda Yasmin Meyer in Lapland, in Finland, on the border between Finland and Russia. We, and there is a big uh, reindeer fence going along the border. And that time, it was also the time when the birds were migrating. So we were making this, also how we built the installation, it was creating kind of a fence inside a space we took over in Colombo and we brought something strange and from we brought the Nordic coldness to the tropical place and cleaned the space from all the flowers and beautiful pots and put our like a cube inside of it so it was similar gesture as a fence in a wide nature area. So it was a very sensorial and immersive installation because you had the layers of the fabrics that you were hanging in the space and then you had the projections, you had the sound and I also think that in that piece because of how you guys shot the, the film, the movie um, you had some angles that seemed to be very abstract like open nature, like you didn't know what it is and then suddenly there was a zoom of a bird fighting in the net so it was there is also a connection with your painting where you go from abstraction to very hard definition like almost like zooming in yeah 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 there comes and also kind of the the will to illustrate so i cannot let it just flow i need also for myself to tell a story actually even i think stories could be told without that kind of a exact image like the man who's going to fall from his stand up and battle battle for but yeah. Do you uh, are you worried uh, with what your audience experience when they go and see your art and see your pieces? Is this something that does concern you as part of your narration, or you rather create, let it there, and let the people that visit your art get their own perception? Uh, I know they will anyways get their own, but I'm very happy when it happens that somebody actually reads the piece as I had in mind because I I am that kind of artist who really thinks it through. It's more like, it's like a writing process for me. So I really know each and every meaning, even in the abstract part of it. So then it's uh, like in my recent show, which was this long video with uh, three dancers dancing with nature element, a lady visited it 
and now we are having a collaboration because she's a philosopher and when I read her PhD which she had published many years ago and now she gave it like showed like hello it's me and I have it in this kind of a so it looked like we had similar ideas like exactly similar ideas but I had expressed express it in in the video and she in her, in her writing so it's great when the ideas meet yeah so how are you coming together are you collaborating or not uh, now we are yes so we are she's writing on my piece and I'm going to write something else on so it's all on feminine feminine being on this earth hmm. so uh, the idea that you just said of almost like writing a script like creating a clear narration it just makes so much sense that you've ended up doing video if you think about it because maybe you started with drawing and you started with making notes sketching painting and then the the, the you becoming mature as an artist has taken you to video which is going to enable that narration even even more easily to to expose it to the audience yeah, uh, yeah it makes sense that they always have been together but in my life, I have always focused on on something more and something less. So, so, but now maybe also because it doesn't take me so much time to practice, for example, the skills how to paint, I can more freely jump from everything to everything. Yeah, you have more so. freedom, not to. So you say that the the project that you may be collaborating with uh, the philosopher, it's about femininity and. That's very, very, you know, hot topic about women and our rights and what is femininity? What does it mean to be a woman nowadays or to be a man? Because men are also quite confused. Um, how does, does this topic impact your art or do you think that as a mother, as a young mother, it has reflected your way of expressing and communicating in art? Um, definitely it has. It has changed my feeling of who I am and from that way it affects everything what I'm doing and it gives maybe more sensibility or I may be same time I have less uh, mental uh, space or my mind is different than before but uh, same time it's because with the child you have to listen and understand and be patient so in that way it comes to also art so I, I know how to listen to my paintings or my videos. Just ask them like, what do you want? Who are you? Who do you want to be? Okay, you want to go there? Let's go. Yeah. So I'm not pushing it so much anymore. Yeah. And the yeah. and the series or the video that you're doing, the one that you're referring to with the dancers, how did that how did that project happen? Because I think there is a little anecdote behind that one too, how you met the dancer, or am I being wrong? Uh, uh, no, no, not so well, no, but I think it happened from a need to to get inside the female, okay. female topic, it was after I had given birth, and that's the, the first year after my child was one, and I really wanted to know what is, um, what are the other ladies about, and what is to be a woman. <laughs> And how, how diverse it is, because even there are three dancers in the piece, and all of them are so different also, from um, like the movement, what yeah. their body creates, and oh, yeah, it's interesting how, how much there is inside of us that yeah. cannot be seen. Yeah. And I think that um, when we talk about art and this sense of community, or creating a group of people, and your curiosity to say, what are other ladies doing? You know, what is going up? You know, going. What is happening in other people's life? How is it for you in Finland, being in Helsinki, to have this community of artists? Is there such thing as a community? Do you have like a big group of people and you're all creative but doing different types of art, or is it very clicky? How is it out there? Uh, well, there is not so much foreign. All the influences come here, like slow so it and sometimes now when there's instagram and all so suddenly there comes like a rush of similar things because everybody's clicking the same instagram like pages but same time because it's so small yeah and everybody went to the same school 
though same time I think a lot of the creation comes from this uh, shared unconsciousness. So people are kind of on some topic at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for you, you've always been an artist. Have you always painted since small? What is your take on on art as a kind of like lifestyle or identity or even therapy in order to overcome everyday life struggle do you does does art help you with you know stress and do you see it as a way of living um it really helps i think each and every moment of my life i have always used that the language to to solve things also because of my father was a different he had a different language from me so it's been a, a means of communication even to to draw as a child because i wasn't so fluent in english as a child so i had had to draw that's nice so, yeah and i think in every even always later on i would realize that actually there was a situation and because i was painting I got over it, but I I haven't kind of uh, it always comes afterwards that I know that this process was good for me mentally, mm-hmm. even I was kind of just focusing on oh which color looks good on which and how to mix a good uh, I don't know turquoise, mm-hmm. but there is some other meaning. Uh, why I do it? There can be something I don't even. Yeah, the the power of subconsciousness of why there's certain topics or certain things that we may be uh, more interested in, and you know why are we talking about nature or why are we talking about certain things that they're unconscious, very deep in in our being, and we can't really understand where they come from. But most of the time, it's because of a previous experience or you know something that happened or a memory or some kind of incident that that has triggered that. Hmm. Yeah. Do you use a uh, drawing now also at pa- as part of your communication with your kid, with Nicolas, with your child? Yes. yes, and now he's the boss, he's the one who is teaching. Ah. So, yes, he know and he knows already at least five colors. Okay. So, it's it's really interesting as it's starting to be a language with us. Not only me showing him or him him making a, like a strange mess, but it's really we paint on the same paper and try to just even for one hour we can just be there and do some strange signs, some marks and and yeah, and then we both just oh it was enough, let's do something else. Yeah, because what but, I've been researching a lot and 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 you know when you look into into a lot of cultures how they've used painting and drawing is almost like a way of meditation and to be mesmerized because it's true you get in such a focus moment concentration like maximum like you're you operating someone's open heart kind of thing and time passes by quite fast because you're so focused and there is some for me when i draw or i do art there is some healing a healing process in the whole it's yeah it's a very intimate process with myself but it's kind of healing it does me well do you experience the same i do definitely and and also when i remember i was so much wishing that when i was pregnant i was thinking oh i want my child to sit on the floor and be like that i was thinking like uh, like to make a calligraphical painting like the chinese in the old times and have that kind of uh, the tranquility and ability to just to, to be to be in one space yes. because i think even like in these uh, these times where we are now it's so great we can travel so far just like just being in one place just in our thoughts and painting really gives because there you can see you see your thoughts they become visible on, on in front of you Yeah, really allow to travel. Yeah, to to really hold the moment and be in the moment, and yeah, same as when you have a thought. Some people feel more comfortable writing. No, everyone has a way of expressing, but everything's creative. So ultimately, everything's about making those feelings or those memories or ideas like tangible, converting them into something that you can see. 
exactly. And somehow, maybe some, for some other people, it's going to gym or doing some. Um, I think painting is interesting how it's such a muscular, uh, muscle, muscle based. Yeah. So physical thing. Yeah. But still, it becomes the. Uh, it becomes a picture. I think the picture part of painting is like it's not sometimes even relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's interesting that we're starting to accept that even as artists, the importance of the process rather than the result. So that it's more about what it creates in you rather than how it looks at the end. Yeah, and that should be something to kind of preserve and keep as a as a precious thing for us. Yeah. So with these crazy times with the coronavirus, like being everywhere, we having to be at home. But from my experience, when I've been seeing you, I feel like Finnish society is already quite like inside the house. Like you're not well, or not. How is it impacting you? Well, now it looks like it's Riviera the first time. It's the opposite. So because they cannot, I mean, those who go to offices can go to offices. At least here where I live, everybody's walking on the, the seaside. So, <laughs> so this this <laughs> phenomenon of literally ignoring the government and because it's hot, everyone going together to the park, it's global. It's in Australia, in Finland, <laughs> in Spain. Okay. Uh, we still, we, but what people do now, we stand in one meter distances. Two meters, in, they said two meters. Okay, here's one of, uh, maybe it's all the weather, I know it doesn't affect, but yeah, here it's one and a half. Yeah. So when, but it's also, yeah. yeah, I was in the supermarket and I was shopping like food and then I was realizing that we were all dancing because more than ever, more than ever, I, I know that people moving in the cities can be seen as a choreography because you're not trying not to touch each other. But now the non-touching is proper, real, real. It's it, it's a fact. So you were like moving around like this, and I was looking at people in the supermarket, thinking we are literally dancing and we don't know it. Wow, there must be some very great video material in the surveillance cameras. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. Uh, Sara, you're very active all the time having projects. You've had like million thousand residencies. Um, maybe what is the highlight of all the residencies that you've done? Is there one that has really struck you and influenced you during your time? Um, I remember that with, because I know that my energy levels have changed so much after being a mother and so, but also because of getting different age. Not aging, becoming different age. So, <laughs> so when I was in New York in a very great residency of the Art Students League at at the Lake Placil, um, I think that was my when I had the I was so much in the painting. It was my best times as a painter. And I was using uh, these facts from the area even, like fresh straight from the farmers and making pigments. So then I was really in it, in my painting practice yeah. and in the color. Wonderful. It's hard to get that kind of image. It was hot summertime, like with all these thunderstorms and the big nature. New York has such a big nature. Yeah. Like everything is powerful. So that all came together with with the smell of the bees back and very strong colors. It was great. I even fainted. It held down. <laughs> <laughs> That's how hot it was. So nature is such a um, such a strong thing in Finnish culture. I think in most Scandinavian countries because even big cities like, like your city, you have big parks and nature and we've been walking around your area with the lake and, and the water. So there's always a very strong correlation and, and search in nature. Does it have something to do with your everyday habits or when you do research? And to what extent do you interact with nature? Do you go for walks? Is there anything uh, that you do that helps you get the right mindset and space of mind when you're creating? Well, it's always the walking thing and here it's always windy and it's always a cold wind only one month a year it's not a cold wind so 
That's definitely. So I just walk on the seaside, which is 20 meters from my house, or I go on actually on the stand up paddle, paddle. stand up board. Is the thing. So, uh, so I go near the, the water, but usually I would walk or I don't go swim. It doesn't help me. Yeah. So, the long walks. And sometimes I still paint outside, even near the house, like small watercolors and that kind of stuff. So I feel it. That's me. Yeah. And so, what kind of projects are you creating now? Do you have, you know, aligned? Is there any exhibition happening or any new project you're gonna be launching or you've launched a short time ago that you want to share with us? Uh, well, this painting actually I will be showing in the countryside with my sister this summer. My sister and two other ladies, two sculptors. Uh, it's it's going to be in a, this, a very idyllic Finnish environment of our old uh, uh, mile kind of a place. Yeah. Ah, in, yeah, one one hundred kilometers from from Helsinki. Is it going to be like an intimate gallery experience or...? They have a different kind of uh, also for travelers or trekkers, like hike, hiking people or like summer activities. But they have a gallery that has been running for, um, I don't know, 10 years at least, maybe 20. So, and there, there are three artists who are presenting at the same time. So it's kind of like a place for the summer some of people to go in a nature environment. So. When is this happening? Which month again? Uh, June. June. And then the title. June. The title is even the power of the nature. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And then your video performance that you were doing with the dancer. Are they still happening? Are they finished? Is it an ongoing project? It's ongoing. So all the time we are working. I'm working also with the circus. Circus project with uh, Wilhelmina, who you met actually in the London at the rounds that we went to see the wonderful performance. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's still, but now we don't know everything about the world in this kind of, yeah. Yeah, because, so, of, the, because of the coronavirus that you guys are canceling. Uh, yeah, so some things are canceled because of only 10 people can be in some same place and that kind of thing so yeah oh and are you currently uh, painting at home or do you have a studio I, i'm painting at home and i'll also outdoors so both yeah i mean yeah i mean but now i'm main painting with my son yeah it's, a, it's on the floor on the floor and are you are you going to do a series or is it going to be just something for you guys to share and nothing well now he has scissors so he has cut everything into slices the cutouts it's... from Matisse no yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah that's great Sarah thank you so much for sharing with us your discipline and what you're doing out there in the normally very cold city uh, that now I guess it looks like you have good sun so it seems like it's kind of warm today um, and yeah we will post people on the description of the video we will add your website and your Instagram so people can follow you and we can keep updated with all the projects and videos that you're doing wonderful thank you so much Alicia it's been a pleasure you're a wonderful interviewer <laughs> I will leave that in the edit thank you <laughs>